I came out of the womb rebelling against everything, against my parents, against tradition, against religion. I mean, you name it, you know, against any sort of rules and authority figure. And so... I was really big in swimming, I was a breaststroker, I was competing at the national level, and then I really quickly pivoted into competitive drinking and like sex, drugs, and rock and roll <laughs> became my thing. And you know, for better and for worse, right? It was me sort of expressing and, and really just trying to figure out who I am at, at a very early age. And, and Do you think being rebellious kind of has helped you in your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say, I mean, there's so many different ways I could take this answer. I think one thing I'll say is more recently, as I've gone on this sabbatical journey, one of the things that I've realized is I've made this massive shift from, you know, my younger years where I was rebelling against everything to realizing that there's incredible power in rebelling for something. To be honest, there, were, there were things in that book that my mom didn't know. I never shared with my family that I got an abortion. And whatever mm. people's views are on that, it's an edgy thing to put out into the yeah. world. And it's certainly an edgy thing. Like, you know, I can feel my palms sweating, right? Even as I say it again, mm. to have your mother read. And, and beyond that, now that it's out in the world, one of the first people who got a hard copy of my book was my 95-year-old grandmother. Wow. And I was like, why not? It's six months. So I packed my entire life up into a storage container, like packed one suitcase, you know, a dog-eared copy of Culture Shock Turkey, because I was like, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. And I just end my passport and I took off. And I didn't, I didn't come home until four years later. Sit down and get curious. Just say, mm. I'm, you know, I'd love to hear this from your perspective. Or maybe it's actually somebody who you really disagree with on a topic. Instead of digging your heels in, you know, and doing the thing we like to do as humans, just sitting down and saying, hey, I definitely see this in a different way, but I'm really curious about your perspective. Tell me more. And what I see, you know, in, in, you know, a lot of people right now is, especially people who are in a situation like I was, where it's, we're pretending not to know right? So this is the universe sending us signals and signs. You know, we are so many of us, especially very driven people, we live up here in our heads. You know, I was getting all these signs from the universe because I was, I was getting sick. You know, I got really, really sick from living in, in Shanghai and was sick for about a year and being treated at the Mayo Clinic. And that gave me a, a, a renewed perspective on life. You know, when you kind of are like, uh, thinking like, I don't know if I'm going to lose my life or my quality of life. Like I really couldn't eat food and it was nuts. So it really made me think about what do I want out of life? And I think the important thing to talk about here is I didn't know how to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And it's a message that, you know, I, it was really important to me to tell this story one, because, you know, as Brene Brown says, you know, shine a spotlight on shame, right? And then sh the shame monster can't live anymore. And I realized that I'd been living with a lot of shame because I tried to kill myself. And like, I only told like five people in my life. My There's a lot of just really big hearted people. And so the one of the things I absolutely loved about Harley was it felt like a democratization of humanity hmm. because we found this like commonality and this passion and this desire for freedom and self-expression and all of the things that this brand stands for. And that felt purposeful to me. And that's what kept me there for six and a half years because I'm like, that's a language I speak. That's what I want to be promoting out in the world. That is advice that I would give to people. <laughs> Maybe calling it a fuck you fund will feel a little edgy for people and that's okay. Give it whatever name lights that fire inside of you. So for me, that really got me going and that made me want to put money away and save and it got me really energized. So whatever that is for somebody else, but give it a name that's like really is gravity and meaning to you. And then slowly but surely just 
put a little bit of money away every month. That's so right. I always say to people like, start getting really, really clear on what does light your soul on fire. Go inward a little bit and spend some time with yourself. That's why I wrote the book as kind of an interactive guide as well. So you're not only reading my story, but then at the end of each section, there are soul search reflection questions so that you can then turn the mirror on yourself. Waking at dawn, packing the gear